Hi-ho, here we are. Coulomb's Law. Coulomb's Law should look very familiar, even though you've probably never seen it before. You see, Coulomb's Law, which is right here, kind of looks like Newton's Universal Law of Gravity. The force of gravity equals big G instead of K, M1 instead of Q1, M2 instead of Q2, over the distance squared. Should look very familiar. It's the same format and therefore we know things such as the direct relationships. We know just like the force was directly related to the mass in Newton's uh, law of universal gravity, the force is directly related to the charge and that's what the Q represents the charge. We measure that charge in coulombs. The distance is still the same. That's an inversely related uh, variable. In fact, it's not just inversely related, but it's inversely squared, and it of course follows this inverse square law. Note also that with k, which is a constant, this never changes, 9 times 10 to the 9th, that's a huge number, and that should tell you something about electrostatics, the electric field, versus the gravitational field. That's with that constant being so huge, it must be much, much stronger. And in fact, gravity is the weakest force. So let's apply this. Just like before, let's put it together in a qualitative type of practice. So the first one, if the amount of charge on charge one were to double, how much would the force be changing? Well. That's a directly related uh, idea. It's like a teeter-totter, right? There's the fulcrum. If we were to increase that side of the teeter-totter and make it bigger, the other side has to increase in order to make it balanced. So if we doubled this, we must, of course, double the other side. Should be double the force. What about if Q1 were to triple? Well, by the same logic, three times. What about if Q1 and 2Q were to double? We know that the force is directly related to the, sorry, to charge 1 and charge 2. Again, if we double this one, we have to double the force on the other side. We double the other one, we have to double this again. So 2 times 2, it looks like 4 times. And of course, distance. Tell me about the distance between the charges, or the force when the distance doubles. It's in the force is inversely related to the distance squared. If it was just the distance, you double this. Of course, as this gets bigger down here, since it's inverse, the force has to be smaller. Well, if it's twice as much, you would say, oh, it's going to be a half, but it's squared. So this would be, of course, one-fourth as much force. Lastly, let's give it a uh, quantitative. Of course, our law is this, K, Q1, Q2, over the distance between them squared and you simply plug things in. Don't forget that k is 9 times 10 to the 9th. If you place two balloons a half a meter apart, each balloon has a charge of negative 2. You're probably wondering about that negative sign. It's truly not all that important for what we do. Not to say it isn't important. But that just tells you if these things are going to attract or if they're going to repel. If you get a positive force, they're repulsive. If you get a negative force, they are attractive. So here it is. The distance is 0.5. So 0.5. Don't forget, it's the distance squared. And when you put that through your calculator, it's 1.44 times 10 to the 11 newtons.